Hello friends, it's me Sonia. Welcome back and thank you for joining me in this presentation. I have something to share with you today and this is my fifth attempt at making this recording. Um, we're going to talk today about Mystery Babylon and this is just the beginning of a series of videos I'm going to be presenting um, regarding Bible prophecy. But this is something that is really important for me to share with you today because I feel that as certain things are progressing and developing in the Middle East, there's a, there's a sense of urgency in my spirit, you guys. That's why I'm pushing out these videos on a regular basis because we don't know how long we have um, you know on an individual basis I don't know you guys how long I've got so I've got to use my time wisely and do what I can to put forth these videos and I pray to the Lord that you will make the most of these teachings these messages and these presentations I'm sharing with you friends please like and share and also consider supporting me ministry wise I read really, really appreciate it now my cat Fifi wants to come in she's gonna have to hang around outside for now oh, can you believe that <laughs> listen let me continue now mystery Babylon you guys we talk about who could she be we know for a start number one is the city it's uh, a royal city from the Word of God we get this impression that she says I am a queen she sits as though she's a queen so we consider her as a royal city a city surrounded by many waters oceans the seas you could say but she's also in the wilderness and you could call that a desert I want to go back and really sort of hone in on this idea of Babylon where does Babylon come from what does it what do we mean when we talk about Babylon well, what I'll do, I'll show you this uh, screen presentation. Hold on just a moment. Mesopotamia is known to be one of the world's oldest civilizations. Now, it's very much connected to my last video, friends. I talked to you about the Assyrian, the Euphrates River, and I made the connection between that region of Turkey, Iraq, and Syria the Euphrates River and the Garden of Eden in the book of Genesis being the very beginning of humanity where the Lord God created man he makes his beautiful garden the Garden of Eden however Satan is going to try to make that place that very place which was the beginning of the Garden of Eden into the world's most wicked horrendously atrocious place on earth so is it interesting that Mesopotamia has, is known to be one of the world's oldest civilizations so we consider that the world's pagan idolatry all these idol gods these various idols although they've been given different names it's the same demon gods that we're talking about here that originated from this region of Mesopotamia now there's one particular idol that is connected to mystery Babylon I believe and I'm going to show you friends through the word of God how in coming videos however in coming videos how this image here is going to be very much um, the main theme of mystery Babylon now Babylon we know if we look back in history we consider the Tower of Babel right the Tower of Babel which God was very much opposed to um, in the time of Nimrod who wanted to elevate himself as high as the heavens and so they make this um, they sort of build together a tower a very high tall tower as high as the heavens we know what happened with that place God was displeased and he divided and confused the languages of that region but that was in today what we would call Iraq in the land of Nimrod the Chaldea Ur so it's not a coincidence it's historical that this crescent moon idol was from that place but did you know that this very emblem of Islam now now it's Islam because remember demons they just change faces you guys and I believe Satan is using this as a vehicle to um, come against the purposes of God for his people and for the land of Israel now I want to show you something 
something for you to consider. This is Mystery Babylon and you can see the pattern of the tower right there. So when I talk to you about Mecca and I've often shared this in discussions online, people say, yeah, but you know, that's Islam, that's Mecca, you know, that they, they just can't seem to comprehend the possibility of this region being Mystery Babylon. For some reason, the Western mindset has depicted the Roman Catholic Church the United States of America, even Jerusalem in Israel, would you believe it, as Mystery Babylon for various reasons of their own. Their own interpretation, their understanding of the biblical prophets leads them to, th to make those conclusions. Now, as a former Muslim, I'm an ex-Muslim and I'm a believer in Jesus Christ. From the very beginning of my walk with the Lord, I saw Islam was being described in the books of the Old Testament prophets and I had no idea why that was so and to cut a long story short over the years that we're talking about since 2004 2005 when I first began showing a lot of interest in uh, Bible prophecy a lot has happened you guys and what I found to be um, really terrifying written in the word of God regarding the regions of the Middle East and Arabia I'm seeing that stuff play out right now so it's important for me to really put forth these messages and to help you consider please at least consider this perspective I believe this is a scriptural perspective I'm going to read to you from the book of Revelation I'm going to read from chapter 18 and again friends this is just a taster of a series of videos i'm going to be putting forth soon so we're going to go into a lot more detail in a lot more scriptures and we're going to look at some very interesting facets to this entity called mystery babylon anyhow chapter 18 the book of revelation i'll read from verse 2 and he cried mightily with a loud voice saying babylon the great is fallen is fallen and has become a dwelling place of demons, a prison for every foul spirit, and a cage for every unclean and hated bird. What exactly does she do, Mystery Babylon? It tells us here, verse 3. For all the nations have drunk of the wine of the wrath of her fornication, the kings of the earth have committed fornication with her. And the merchants of the earth have become rich through the abundance of her luxury. And I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people, lest you share in her sins and lest you receive her plagues. 
for her sins have reached to heaven and God has remembered her iniquities. If you continue to read that whole chapter, it will go on to list the, um, the items, the products, the very produce that this mystery Babylon city imports from these merchant nations. That's how they get rich. But there is this unholy exchange between them, which is where this spiritual harlotry, this fornication, this contract between them has been made. Is it any wonder why the nations, the merchants of the earth, who are made rich by her, are mourning and lamenting at her destruction? Friends, this place is being built right now. It's in the making. And I'm going to show you where that place is. And some of you who are my friends and we're interested in Bible prophecy, you know the place I'm talking about right now. Do you know when it references here in verse 4, come out of her, my people. Many people say, yeah, but Babylon's the whole world. Mystery Babylon is this, you know, is everything here that we're living in. No, it's a city. It's a geographic location. It's a city. A desert wilderness city surrounded by many waters surrounded by the oceans now this city that is being revamped giving a new look a facelift if you like is gonna start to attract a lot more nations around the world in fact many nations are invested in her I'm talking about Egypt Israel Jordan these are the nations who are within close proximity to her. Can you take a wild guess? <laughs> okay, let me show you what I'm talking about. So as I said, this I believe is Mystery Babylon in the making. And um, if I can just bring that video back here. Watch this you guys. When the Word of God talks to us and it says, <laughs> hurry up camera, this is what you get for self-improvising on your own phone. When the Word of God talks to us about Mystery Babylon, it begins with this very interesting description back in the book of Revelation. Let's go to uh, chapter 17. So we know that this is John being shown these uh, visions. And an angel is always present to give him the understanding. It's interesting to me that John being shown this woman, the harlot, does not recognize her to be Jerusalem. He's actually amazed. Verse 3, so he carried me away in the spirit into the wilderness. So the angel picks him up, plonks him in a place called the wilderness. And I saw a woman sitting on a scarlet beast, which was full of names of blasphemy, having ten heads and ten horns. The woman was arrayed in purple and scarlet and adorned with gold and precious stones and pearls, having in her hand a golden cup full of abominations and the filthiness of her fornication. And on her head a name was written, Mystery, Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and of the abominations of the earth. I saw the woman drunk with the blood of the saints and with the blood of the martyrs of Jesus. And when I saw her, I marveled with great amazement. 
But the angel said to me, Why do you marvel? I will tell you the mystery of the woman and of the beast that carries her, which has the seven heads and ten horns. And that passage goes on to describe how these past empires, kingdoms, are the very kings that she reigns over. So if you think about the geographic location, these past empires and kingdoms, she controls them. But the weird thing about this weird relationship between the beast and the harlot is that the beast will turn on her and destroy her. And you may have heard me say this before, there are Islamic nations out there who despise Saudi Arabia. They absolutely do not like her. And um, there's something else I want to show you. The word of God is amazing, you guys. And I just hope that you would consider this. Now, I showed you their promo video for Neom City. This project is being built, basically. It's happening right now. They've completed phase one and they're now in the middle of phase two. They want to have this thing completed by, I think it's 2025 and 2030. So let's read from here. Saudi Arabian citizens who are eligible for compensation in the coastal area will receive free plots of land in the kingdom's futuristic city of Neom, the Saudi press agency reported. The third paragraph there, the city on the coastline of the Red Sea will extend into neighbouring Egypt and Jordan and has received 500 billion in financial support from Saudi Arabia's public investment fund is expected to be an eco-friendly project with state-of-the-art technology. I'm going to go into a lot more detail regarding these bits of information, especially the public investment fund. I want to show you the state-of-the-art that we're talking about here. Let me find this uh... Bear with me. Play close attention to what she's saying. Saudi Arabia is building a futuristic mega city called Neom, deep in a desert bordering the Red Sea. I just want to propose to you that I believe this is Mystery Babylon and you're seeing it in this video. It's in the making, you guys. The state has pledged at least $500 billion to make it happen and is now soliciting further investment. Blueprints show wild plans for artificial rain, a fake moon, robotic maids and holographic teachers. Phase 1 is due for competition in 2020 with the final brick laid in 2025. It is unclear whether it will live up to its sky-high expectations. Saudi officials describe it as the world's most ambitious project. It's called Neom a planned 16 borough city on the Red Sea coast in the northwestern Saudi province of Tabuk. Okay, that bit there, oh, let me see if I can just get that back. Okay, right. I hate when that does that. You see, that's the location where this city is going to be built. It's huge, you guys. It's a mammoth project. The relationship between Israel and Saudi Arabia, as you may be aware, is pretty tight. Yeah, it's a secret fact. <laughs> they have a pretty close, hunky-dory relationship. Why is that? Because this region wants it, wants to prosper. It wants to thrive, prosper, grow rich. And so they're working together alongside Egypt and Jordan. This whole region is going to be the future in regards to the world's biggest, most luxurious technological advancement hub. I don't know how else to put it. If we're thinking about Vatican and comparing it to this place, you have to be kidding me. There's no way that the Lord is... He's been showing us through the scriptures, this place is, like I've said over and over, the Bible prophecies regarding its relationship to Jerusalem. How is this having an impact on the land of Jerusalem, the holy city, the city of the Messiah? Well, recently we've known about this Saudi Arabian involvement 
with being the Waqf, the guardian of the Temple Mount, the Dome of the Rock and Al-Aqsa. But did you know that Turkey is also very heavily invested in Jerusalem, opening up this new sort of cultural awareness center in the heart of Jerusalem. So to me, that's already given me a precursor, a foreshadowing of the Antichrist and Mystery Babylon, both trying to get a slice of the pie, which is Jerusalem. Let me continue with this video. Just pay close attention to what she says. The province of Tabuk. Niam is a portmanteau of the Greek word Nias, meaning new, and Mustakbal, the Arabic word for future. It will cover 10,230 square miles and cost Saudi Arabia's public investment fund at least $500 billion, plus millions in foreign investment if they can get it. Niam is part of Vision 2030, an ambitious plan to revolutionize Saudi's society, reduce dependence on oil and make the country a technology hub. In January 2019, Saudi Arabia set up a company, also called Niam, to be the driving force behind the building effort. Niam is supposed to draw on cloud seeding technology to make artificial clouds which will produce more rainfall than naturally possible in the desert. Neom will also have the leading education system on the planet, which classes will be taught by holographic teachers, officials say. Another idea is a Jurassic Park-like island for tourists with robotic dinosaurs. At night, Neom is supposed to be illuminated by a giant artificial moon. People will get about using flying taxis, so the officials say. Niam is working on the notion that in the future driving cars will just be for fun and no longer a method of transportation. So people might drive a Ferrari to the coast but not drive themselves to work. According to the plan, Niam residents will be able to choose from more Michelin starred restaurants per capita than in any other city. The Red Sea coastline will be altered according to the plans, with glow in the dark sand added to its beaches. Construction work has already started on Neon Bay, phase one of the mega city. Some progress has already been made. Neon Airport is nearly finished and has already been registered as an official international airport. Neon used a photo of Singapore's gardens by the bay in their marketing materials, suggesting that they'll likely draw inspiration from the South Asian city. The Saudi government is already hosting events as the site of Niam to generate investment and media attention. We just have to wait and see how awesome the city Niam will be. Thanks for watching. Give us a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe. So this place, as you can see, is like Vegas slash paganism on steroids. It is a mammoth project, you guys, and this is just the beginning. It's being built right now. This is why the world has been, Bible prophecy world, has been very divided and uncertain or very certain on the paradigm of end times Bible prophecy. It's because much of it was very unclear, uncertain. But like I've said before, as we approach the end times, Things will begin to make more sense. We'll begin to see things more clearer. This whole region, God is going to have destroyed, you guys. I want to read to you something very prophetic from the book of Revelation. And I might end the video here. In fact, there's something else I want to show you. Just bear with me. Um, there's so much to talk about regarding this topic. Jeremiah chapter 49 verse 21 i'm picking out a verse but in my coming videos i'm going to do a bible study and we're going to explore more scriptures in the old testament to better understand the book of revelation so bear with me verse 21 the earth shakes at the noise of their fall at the cry its noise is heard at the red sea behold he shall come up and fly like the eagle and spread his wings over Bozra. The heart of the mighty men of Edom in that day shall be like the heart of a woman in birth pangs. 
This whole book is about severe judgment and catastrophe over Edom, Damascus, Kedar, Elam and Hazor. Today, these are all Islamic nations. There's something else I want to show you. You guys, the days are growing darker and we need to get our heads in the Word of God. That book needs to be the book that we read the most right now. If you want to put it down to percentage, it needs to be up there in the 70 and the 80% of the content of what we read, even the stuff we read online. Bible prophecy is that important. Let me show you something. I'm showing you loads of things today, I know. Okay, um, where's that link? Tourism, this is their website. Neom City's website. And it brings you to this page, Tourism. Pay close attention to that image. What is that image there? It's the desert and it's surrounded by the sea. In Isaiah 21, I'm going to read to you, which I believe gives us, well it does, it says it right there, you guys. Isaiah 21 introduces that phrase, Babylon is fallen, is fallen. And then we read it in the book of Revelation, but it was first mentioned here. And I believe this is giving us the interpretation of where the location of this place is going to be. Let me read it to you, verse 21, Isaiah 21. The burden against the wilderness of the sea, as whirlwinds in the south pass through, so it comes from the desert, from a terrible land. Now, again, read the whole chapter in your own time, but there are many other scriptures that talk to us about this desert region, this wilderness region being surrounded by the seas, is a great city, a big merchant city, by which all the merchant nations of the earth become rich by her. But you see, there's this exchange that takes place between her and the kings of the earth. Let me just give you a Wikipedia fest here. Neom is a planned cross-border city in the Tabuk province of northwestern Saudi Arabia. It is planned to incorporate smart city technologies. Yeah, have you heard of the AI robot Sophia that's actually been given citizenship in this place? You guys, the future is in the east, <laughs> according to Bible prophecy. It's all in the Middle East, you guys, and we've just got to, you know, open up our eyes and just be prepared. Be prepared to pay close attention. This is a promotion video. You can look at these ancient hills and see nothing. Or you can see nothing to hold you back. No set ways of thinking, no restrictions, no divisions, no excuses, just endless potential. You see, this is the, what this they're trying the to do, promote this place so the, the world will invest Neon. and even migrate over there, over you guys. 000. They're building this, um, if I can get the volume right, the they're building this massive sort of residential complexes. I mean, it's to be a future for the people to go there and live there, to work there, to socialize there. It's Vegas combined with paganism. But not only that, they're going to have laws, new, revised, relaxed laws. Islamic laws, as you know, is the main law in Saudi Arabia, right? Which is why they do beheadings. But this place of Neom is going to have more of a relaxed legal system so they can have more liberty more freedoms and a more of a moderate strain of islam meanwhile gaba in mecca would still be open for pilgrimage and it's just complete harlotry this whole thing is an absolute abomination to the lord and um, again i'm going to show you more videos 
and express to you the Bible in a way that will help you hopefully to um, understand what these scriptures mean in our time today. Because so much of what we've read, so much of what we've seen in Bible prophecy, the teachers that are out there, the really, really good teachers, um, some of it was a little touch and go, it wasn't really clear. But now, as you can see, the future is pointing us to this region. This gives the beast antichrist system. I hope this makes sense to you why the antichrist beast. You see, the beast comprises of those ten kings. Together, combined, they are the beast. The reason why they hate us because they hate Saudi Arabia's wealth. They find that she is illegitimate uh, guardian of the shrine. And another thing... This discovery regarding Petra, the historic foundations of Islam, Petra, Nabataean city, this is becoming more common now. More, more people are becoming more informed regarding the, the discoveries of this region. So it's going to be really interesting to see how the nations of the world start to gravitate towards this region, which is Saudi Arabia's Neom city. Anyway, that was just an introduction, you guys. I'm going to go through a lot more scriptures. And I hope that you're very open to listening to this paradigm. Please leave your feedback in the comment section. I like to read them. And I think it's helpful for us to go back and forth and share scriptures and perspectives also. Okay, that's it for, for now. And um, hope to see you again soon. Please share this video. Thank you.